On today's Maker Mashup, we're talking about the new features in the SKR version 1.4. So in this hand, I've got the one three and in this hand, we've got the one four. So what we're gonna be doing on today's video is comparing some of the new features that are in the version 1.4 of the SKR. If you've got an SKR board, you know it's one of the hottest boards available right now for your 3D printer. And I personally love them. The new one has some really cool features that we're gonna be covering, including, and my most favorite and wanted feature, more fan pins. So we're gonna be talking about those new features and some of the really cool plugins that are now available for this board. And we're also going to be touching base on something that I found that was really, really important for anyone putting together our 3D printer videos, and that is the change in pins for installing the drivers. So let's get to work. So on December 12th of 2019, I saw Big Tree Tech had released version 1.4 of their SKR board. And I was pretty excited because I have had the 1.3 for a while and really love this board. So as, as soon as I saw it was released, I went out to Amazon to see if it was available and it wasn't. So I went out to their website and purchased a version 1.4. I did not opt for the turbo version, that's only a couple of dollars more. I did go ahead and order this and it took only 10 days from China Direct. It is now available on Amazon and I have links to it in the description. So let's talk about what's remained unchanged between the 1.3 and the 1.4. First, let's see the footprint here is exactly the same between the two. They've also left the USB and the SD card in the same spot as before. Our power connection row is identical and in the same spot. The connections for our display board and our end stops is almost in the same location. You can see on the 1.3, they pushed it up ever so slightly, but for the most part, this is all in the same spot. And then also our stepper row is in exactly the same spot and our connections for those steppers is in the same spot here. So now that we've covered what is identical between the two boards, let's drill into what's different. Along with the existing great features of the 1.3, there's a whole bunch of new ones on the 1.4 and 1.4 turbo. So let's take a look at the board and see what's on it. Okay, so now we have our close up of the board and let's start digging into what's different. One of the first things is that you'll see here that there's new connections for Wi-Fi. This is a connection that is specifically built for the Big Tree Tech Wi-Fi adapter. You'll also see that there's now an I2C connection in here. And with this I2C connection, this will allow you to send and receive commands with Marlin to an I2C device. We've got our SPI connection here, or SPI, and that connection is a different protocol than I2C. So we have connections for both that are now available on this board. The board also has a row of RGB lights that you can set right here on the board itself. So a lot of times you had to create an adapter specific for this. Now you can control RGB lights like NeoPixels directly from the board. Over here, you can see there's dedicated BL Touch support. So we have the servo and the probe right here for BL Touch installations. This makes it a lot easier for people to go ahead and get a BL Touch installed and set up with this board. Now, one of my favorite features of the board, there is now one, two, three, four fan pins. Now, most people would say that they don't necessarily need four different fan pins, but the nice thing about having multiple fan pins that are controllable is that you're able to turn your fans off when the printer isn't directly printing or running. This is great when you have something like the TMC2208 drivers. No need to blow air across these if you're not actually printing. So something else new with this board is the fact that there are dedicated pins for closed loop steppers. Now closed loop steppers work differently than your traditional steppers and have the ability to detect missteps and know more precisely where the print head is. So the advantage of the dedicated pins of the closed loop stepper is that you won't need one of these stepper adapters as you can see from this MKS manual on their closed loop stepper. 
I'm hoping that Big Tree Tech will come out with their own closed loop stepper. The MKS versions currently don't run Trinamic drivers, so while you can get higher performance with a closed loop stepper, the problem you're going to see is that until they're adopting Trinamic drivers, you're going to find those salmon skin artifacts and other artifacts in your prints, especially at high speeds. Another nice feature is that now on the Z-axis, there are two outputs to the steppers. So if you happen to have two steppers, it, let's say a Prusa clone or a C201 printer that you've built from this channel, then you only need to use these two and you don't have to take over your E1 or you don't have to use a splitter for these connections. So let's dig into some of the under the hood items with this board. The CPU is identical, however, they do now have a 120 megahertz version of this in a turbo version. So if for some reason you need more performance, you can get an extra 20 megahertz in the turbo version. Another difference is that they've improved the thermistor by putting a varistor and a capacitor in place. Now the previous version does look like it has a capacitor on it. However, it, you can see that they've changed these tremendously between the two versions. These are much smaller compared to these much beefier capacitors that they have. Now Big Tree Tech claims that that gives more accurate readings for the thermistor values. So one of the differences under the hood is that this row of pins has been replaced with the closed loop steppers, which means that Big Tree Tech has changed these pinouts to operate differently. So what you'll need to do is if you are using a C201 or you want to use these steppers in UART mode, instead of these pins being located here, they need to be located in that second slot there. And I'm going to cover this in a future video that will cover the setup of this with uh, C201. So that way you can get this board up and running and take advantage of these new features in your 3D printer versus the 1.3. Big Tree Tech has a number of add-on modules for the board as well. One of them being the power module, BTT writer that's available, and their Wi-Fi module. Now, if you want to get the complete package, they have the entire setup for 3180. This includes the BTT writer, the Wi-Fi module, and their power module. However, I was not able to find this complete kit on Amazon. So if you're interested in getting all their add-on modules right now, you're currently going to have to order that from China Direct. So I'm excited by what Big Tree Tech has done with version 1.4, and I like the direction that they're going with this board. You can see that they've really put some effort into adding new functionality to the board. They're releasing the new versions on a pretty regular basis, and they've got new features that users are asking for. So the question is, is where do we really see this going with Big Tree Tech and their board offering today? So I would really like to see Big Tree Tech come out with a closed loop stepper. The MKS steppers that are available now for closed loop really don't use the Trinamic drivers. So the limitation there is artifacts and noise. Now they are quieter than say your A4988, but I feel like the closed loop steppers are taking a backward step in technology instead of using the Trinamic drivers out the gate. So if Big Tree Tech does come out with a closed loop stepper, I'm definitely going to check that out. I think Big Tree Tech is also positioning themselves in the marketplace as a leader as they keep updating this technology. So I think the home 3D printer market is going to get better and better. And with closed loop steppers, we're talking about increased speed. So it's something that I'm going to be hoping that Big Tree Tech watches this video and says, let's put one together. So I'm really looking forward to getting started with this board. And in my next videos, I'm going to be covering some of the really cool features. I'm going to try to implement some of these. I really like the idea of having the NeoPixels on there and RGB lights to be able to control that with a 3D printer and being able to control that through Marlin. I am also want to experiment with the I2C interface because the ability to add some I2C sensors and pick that up with the new Marlin functions that are available for I2C really make it so that way you can expand your 3D printer to places that you've never had it before. So again, really excited by that.
So what do you think about the SKR board? Please leave a comment below and let me know if you think this is something that you're gonna purchase or use on an upcoming 3D printer project. So I wanna say this video was not sponsored in any way. I went to the website, purchased it directly, and waited for the board to come direct from the manufacturer. So everything in this video is my own opinion, and I've used their products before, so I recommend them only because I've used them and I really like it. So I'm really looking forward to trying out the 1.4 board. So with that, it's gonna be the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to subscribe so that way you see our new version 1.4 videos that we're gonna be producing here. And share this video with your friends and family. I am sure there's lots of people that don't know the new version 1.4 is available. I was excited to hear about it. The only way I found out was I was following Big Tree Tech's channel on YouTube and that's how I know. So reasons to subscribe is so that way you don't miss some of the latest technology that's available. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.